we give glory to God. And today's message is only for people who fed up. Fed up. Just, just holler at me if you're tired. Good. People don't change until hurting, until remaining the same hurts too bad. People change when staying the same hurts, and when it hurt bad enough, you'll say bye bye. Bible says, I've been well acquainted with grief. By the time you get tired of pain being a guest in your home, you say, You ain't got to go home, but you. I dare you tell depression, You ain't got to go home, but you have got to get, I'm saved, out of here. I'm saved, but I'm at church. You got you to get out of here. You got to get out of here. Genesis 35. Genesis chapter 35. No, you know what, 37. My apologies. Genesis chapter 37, verse 5. Genesis 37, verse 5. Genesis 37, verse 5. The Bible says, And Joseph dreamed a dream. And he told it to his brothers. Big mistake. That he thought that because they were close to them that they were on a need-to-know basis. And sometimes people who are close to you don't need to know. And they hated him the more. So they don't, they're not haters. See, let me, let me tell you about a hater. Haters don't hate you. They hate what they think you are. And anytime you have enough courage to become what they think you are, then you get more haters. But you got to be well acquainted with that. You got to be fine with that. This is, just, this is just the next stage of your life. You used to be popular, now you're going to be famous. And that's the difference. You used to come to the family reunion and everybody was like, oh, look at who, who's here. And now you come and they're looking down your nose. She thinks she's better than us, don't she? No, you think I'm better than you. Because if I thought I was better than you, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> I did not run this hard to stay in place. I went through all of that so I could change. You know, people say, you changed, and you're right, I am. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't go through all I went through to stay the same. I'm, I'm changing. Somebody say, I'm changing. Whenever you are in an environment that challenges your growth, you are in danger because the environment wants you to stay the same. Which is why I'm going to preach on this subject. I need you to help me preach it. Tell your neighbor, it's a trap. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. It's a trap. It's a trap. It's a trap. Write this down. And uh, I'm going to teach this to you today. Is that all right? Write this down. The moment you decide to walk away from ordinary, and I'm going to repeat it several times, so don't, don't panic. The moment you decide to walk away from ordinary, the less familiar you become with yourself. The moment you decide to walk away from ordinary, the less familiar you are with yourself. You need me to say it again? Okay, last time. The moment you decide to walk away from ordinary, the less familiar you are with yourself. In other words, if you feel that you've walked away from ordinary or you're going to the next level, haven't you started to question yourself and, and be unsure, if you're honest, kind of unsure about some of the moves you're making? Nobody will ever know it, but you've been questioning yourself and, and, and you've been doubting yourself but, but we all have become good 
at, at uh, our persona. So we, we step out like we are bold, but after we finish, we retreat to insecurity. There are times I stand on this stage and I go home and think, Lord, that was the worst sermon I've ever preached in my life. And then somebody will text me and say, you changed my life. And I have this constant battle between what I think is good and what's acceptable and what's good and what's needed because our life trains us that good always gives us a certain response. But the higher you go, don't you ever forget when I'm getting, whoo, Lord, thank you. The higher you go, the more diversified responses can be. Did, I, did you hear what I said? All right. For instance, if you give a two-year-old baby some candy, they are all going to respond the same. I was watching Nick's son um, the other day, and they gave him some donuts or something. And the boy bit into the donut, and it was his first time having that much sugar. And let me tell you, this is the God's honest truth. That boy kept moving his mouth every time he saw a donut. <laughs> this happened just in the back last week. He bit that donut. They took him over there to where the donuts were, and this is what he did. <laughs> All kids have the same reaction to candy and sweets. But how many adults in here don't too much care for sweets? See? Now, how many of you all, like me, I start thinking about my dessert before I eat my food? My wife be done cooked. I said, so what are we eating after this? I eat dessert after every meal. I don't care if it's one Skittle. I will eat one Skittle just to have something after. This is the God's honest truth. I, I, wanna, I want some kind of cupcake. Uh. Oh, Lord. And I don't like chocolate. No. I want some strawberry and some pineapples. Anyway, but the, the message is that if I were to ask the question, who wants candy in the youth church, everybody's hands would have went up. If I asked the question in the main sanctuary where the adults are, some say yes, some say no. Why? Because the higher you go, the more diversified responses. You see, whenever everybody in your crowd wants the same thing, you're low. High-minded, high circles of people bring diversity. Diversity is important. That's what makes America great because we have all kinds of people. Uh, anything that's great has to be diversified. And, and, and so here we are looking in the scripture, and, and now Joseph's responses have become diversified because when he was a little cute baby and he was their little brother and they were beating him up on the playground and they were playing with him, he was their guy, but then God elevated him. Y'all were here with me Tuesday, right? God elevated him and did what? Gave him a coat of what? Many colors. Now, his brothers, they had a white coat. It was elbow length, knee length, and it was white. Joseph had a coat of many colors, long sleeve, all the way down to the ankle. So, there is something on him that makes the people around him recognize that you don't have on you what we have on us. And the reason why you can't see this is because God in the spirit has put a garment on you and you don't know it. And you don't recognize that every time you walk in the place that people see you have something on you. That they don't have on them. And you're wondering, what's wrong with them? Why are they treating me like this? Why are they acting that way towards me? I'm just trying to be nice. I'm trying to show myself friendly. It's not about what you're showing yourself. It's about what God put on you that you didn't see. And I want you to know that sitting in that chair right now, you have something on you that nobody else has on them. You have something on you that nobody else has on them. And never be jealous of anybody else's coat. Because God has one specifically for you. You see, I was telling you about my, my brother Pete and how we wore the same shoes. But do you know, once I got above a 10, I could no longer wear his shoes. So what if I would have thought his shoes were my shoes? Then I would have restricted myself to a 10. 
Y'all, y'all gonna, can I, I told you I wanted to teach you today. I don't want to hoop you. I don't want to shout you. If I would have accepted his size as my size, then I would have restricted myself to a 10. And by the way, then restricted my growth because I couldn't be 6'4 with a size 10. I had to have a foundation that could handle the height. See, every time, every time you make a decision down here, you can hurt what's up here. Don't settle for a 10 because it fits now. God has something bigger for you. God has something wider for you. He has something deeper for you. And you've got to understand that the time is going to come where you're going to outgrow the exchange. God, help me in this place. You're going to outgrow what they can give you. You're going to outgrow what they can let you borrow. You're going to outgrow what they can teach you. And then you're going to go out here and you're going to have to teach yourself. And you're going to have to learn for yourself. And you're going to have to expand for yourself. Why? Because you're no longer the same size. Somebody say, I'm no longer the same size. That's why you don't fit in anymore. Because they are the same size and you're not. You don't think the same and they still do. They still drinking. You trying to use that money to invest. It's, it's the same stuff. Now, y'all ain't going to make me get that. I, I'm, don't, don't act like you've never gotten to a season where you used to spend money on alcohol and used to spend it on cigarettes and, and used to spend it on a little dime bag. But then God grew you to a place and you say, you know what? I'm done smoking. I'm done drinking. I'm tired of wasting my money on that stuff. I'm getting ready to reinvest to touch your name and say, you too, while you sitting up there acting fake. You could pay your rent if you didn't have it all on the counter. Hennessy ain't cheap. Y'all be shocked at some of the stuff I say. I'd be shocked at some of the stuff you do. If you wasn't doing it, I wouldn't have nothing to preach about. Don't y'all look at me like I'm just making this stuff up. Who's expanding? You're expanding so much that when you come to church, you're going to need both seats on both sides. Tell your neighbor, this is the last Sunday you're going to be able to sit next to me. I'm going to be so big when I get here next time. I'm going to take up this one, that one, and the one behind me. I'm expanding. I'm going to need all this. People who grow frustrate people who don't. Ain't nothing like dating somebody and walking in the house and all of a sudden getting the epiphany. I'm growing and you're not. There's nothing worse than being in a friendship with somebody who's growing and somebody who's not. It's one of the worst feelings in the world for you to be going higher and everybody else is going lower. And sometimes you feel like, you know what, I'm supposed to save them. But do you die trying to save them? Do you give up your growth for somebody who don't want to grow? You have to expand. Joseph said... Listen, I am no longer on the same level as y'all. I finally realize it, and it is what it is. I didn't ask for the coat. I didn't ask for God, my daddy, to change the color. I didn't ask for it. He gave it to me. The Bible says he was the son of Joseph's, Jacob's what? Old age. When the Bible says that he was the son of his old age, I've told you this before, it doesn't mean, although he was 91 he had him, when he had him, it doesn't mean that he made him his favorite son because he was old when he had him. You know why? Because he had another son named Benjamin after that. So it could not be. He was even older when Benjamin was born. The difference between Joseph and Levi and Reuben and Nephtali and Ben, all of those guys, the difference between all of those guys and him was he was wiser than the rest of them. The Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the principal thing. He was the son of his old age. In other words, he's saying, you're the only son I got that's mature enough to handle the coat. You, you are a young boy, but you got an old spirit. Your, your, your son, my other boys, they like Drake, but you like Ron Isley. You see, you see. Y'all, I'm trying to make y'all understand what I'm saying. How, how many young folk in here that know that old school music? Ain't nothing like it. Ain't nothing like it. Now, I like all this new stuff. But when times get tough and I feel like crying, ain't nothing new to listen to. I got to put Luther in there. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I I like new music. I love it all. It's good. It's good to dance to. It's good to get crunk to. It's good to be lit. But when you got to get over something, 
You got to go back there and get old Marvin and old Al. You got to go back and get the temptations. Come on, y'all. And so, so, so he says, I'm, I'm not on the same level. I understand it. I'm a lot mature than you all. And I'm not going to continue to act immature to fit in. Can I tell you all something? Can you stop acting a certain way so you can fit in with people you are nothing like? You stop changing your behavior so that they will accept you. Just listen, if you live up to the standard God put on you, another circle will find you. You might be lonely for a season, but God will send you somebody who is compatible with your destiny. Whenever you are around people who you're not compatible with, it's the reason you never get downloads. Did you hear what I said? Everybody here who got an iPhone, take it out. The rest of you, prayer meeting is after service. (laughs) Who don't have an iPhone? Just raise your hand if you don't. God, right now, in the name of Jesus. (laughs) Nobody told us the road was going to be easy. (laughs) But you didn't bring them this far. Here, Tasha, didn't bring him this far to leave him. <laughs> I want you to go to your settings. Go to general. About. And I want you to tell me what version of iOS you're running. Who said 11.1? Who said 11.2? Who said 11.3? Who said 11.4? Look at how many people you're sitting next to you're incompatible with. (laughs) Because, watch this, listen to me. 11.4 fixed some of the bugs from 11.1, 2, and 3. And you got people in your life complaining about bugs you don't understand because you ain't on that system. I don't have an answer for you because I'm not operating that low. I don't have an answer for you because I've been done with that three systems ago. I don't know what to tell you because I am grown. I'm at the next level and I don't have nothing for you. What they call a bug, you call an upgrade. What they call depression, you call the past. What they call a problem, you call strength. What they call an issue, you call it more than enough. You don't even see the world the same. So you marry somebody on 11-4. Problem in our house is we got Androids and Apples. And we're trying to give somebody instructions on a system that it doesn't work on. Am I helping anybody so far? Number one, you cannot explain your privilege. I don't know why I got this coat. I don't know why I've been chosen to be one of the greatest business women in the city. I don't know why I've been chosen to be one of the greatest businessmen. I don't know why they picked me to be the manager. I don't know why I can just think of stuff. I don't know why I can get along with people. I don't know why I have the vernacular to talk across cultural lines. I don't know why I can understand. I don't know why he made me that way. And here you are explaining something that God gave you before you were formed. And you're trying to make everybody understand, well, and, and this is what, 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 why you're killing yourself. You're doing it at the expense of trying to be liked. You'll never have a purple coat and a lot of people to like you. If you want friends, keep your coat white, short, and elbow length. But if you ever expand, God help me in this church. Y'all got to put all, you know, you're supposed to put all this stuff together. Whenever you expand, whenever things start happening for you, then the side effects of expansion is expulsion. The more you grow, the more you stretch, the more you do, the more you see, the less you'll have. 
in the area of accommodations and people and understanding. Joseph, God did this. He said, I had a dream. And when I went to sleep, I saw bundles of sheaves. This is wheat. And it was bowing to me. And God told me that y'all was the wheat, so get to bowing. And they like, boy, you crazy. I ain't bowing nobody younger than me. Which lets me know God's going to allow you to do it before anybody you've ever seen do it. You better get ready to be the first in your family to do what you're doing. I'm looking at some first generation millionaires. I'm looking at some first generation people who are going to raise all your kids. Come on. I'm looking at some first generation young women. You're not going to have a baby till you get married. I'm looking at some first generation people who are going to stay married and not get divorced. Who am I talking to? Matter of fact, do me a favor and high five three people and say, God called me to break a curse. God called me to end something in my family. God called me to overdo something, overturn something in my family. I don't have a reference point. I don't know how I'm going to do it. Don't know where it's coming from. But I know it's going to end in my generation because God put that kind of oil on me. If I'm talking to you, shout hallelujah. Don't get tough, though. You think the devil's just going to let you break a curse without a fight? You think he's going to let you come and undo something that's been on your last name for 35 years without a fight? And sometimes when the devil fights you, since he can't get to you because you pray and you fast, he'll go get your third grader. Come on, y'all. He'll go get your middle schooler. He'll go get your high schooler. He'll go get your college grad because you are too fortified for an attack. That's why you got to cover everything in your house. You got to cover your children, your husband, your dog, your doorknobs, your alarm clock. Somebody shout, I shall recover it all. Just walk through your house covered in the name of Jesus. Covered, covered. When your baby in, in the bed at night, I dare you to take some oil and just... Y'all not here with me. You, you, you got to put the oil on the doorpost. Thank you, Israel. So the death angel will pass over. Put it on your doorknob. Put it on your microwave. Put it on your windows. Put it on your tires. Put it on your steering wheel. And put it on your mouth so you can speak blessed. Because you are not ordinary. And you are not average. And whoever told you was that you were, were trying to trap you. The reason why people keep you in ordinary is because they have no instructions for extraordinary. And they don't want to lose you, so they'd rather keep you beneath them. Oh, God help me in this church. They'd rather keep you beneath them so they can understand you. Rather than you have a dream and tell them, I had a dream and you were bowing. And you were picked. And that's all it is to it. Like, anybody, like, you fly, it ain't your fault. Like, hey, how many of y'all, I'm like, <laughs> what, what you expect me to do? And if you don't start to see yourself like that, nobody else will. I'm not telling you to be arrogant. I'm telling you to see what he created. Why be a Ferrari? Why be a Ferrari and keep driving 40 miles per hour? Test yourself sometime. Push that engine just to see if you can whip around somebody in a second or two. I'm not saying keep your foot on the gas the whole way, but just let them know. Try me if you want to. Now, how many of y'all, to be honest, how many of y'all race sometimes? They come up beside you. I, boy, if my wife with me, I don't do it. But if she ain't with me, I see them coming to in my rear view. I'm like, oh, they want some. All right. Let's go. <laughs> you can't explain your privilege. You don't know why he blessed you the way he did. Only thing you can do is do something with what he gave you. Many of you spend more time explaining than you do experiencing you got to operate in the function 
and in the vernacular and in the conversation and in the circles and in the environment that he has created you for, get out of the weeds, get out of the mud and start operating on the level that God has for you so that you can be fulfilled through your purpose and so you can see what God really put in you because the worst thing in the world is to die and not get everything out of you that God put in you. You not only do yourself a disservice, you do the world a disservice because there is something that the world needs that is only in you. Am I helping anybody? Nail saying, Joseph, we mad at you. Why? Because your coat is different and it's a different color. And here is the deal. I told him this this morning. I'm going to tell you this afternoon. They were focused on the coat and they were focused on the color. And what they should have been focused on is the capacity of the man who was wearing the coat. You'll look at somebody and say, I can't believe they got that. They may not look like on the outside what you think people look like on the outside that has those gifts and talents, but because there is somebody on the inside. Y'all not here with me today. Because they may not be the prettiest person you've ever seen, but their heart is beautiful. They may not have long hair, but they have long suffering. See, if you'll just do something on the inside, you'll see God put something on you on the outside. I want every person in here to make up in your mind that you're going to do a makeover, but you're going to do it from the inside out. You're going to put makeup on your spirit, on your heart, the way you treat people. No sense of being beautiful outside and ugly inside. You got to change who you are in here. And when you change capacity, can I see those bottles again? Let me show you. I wasn't going to do it, but I just thought I would do it. Bring both of them up here. They already got it. They already got it. Now, see, some of y'all, thank you, Nick. Are they open already? Open them. I can't, I can't put the mic down and do it. Thank you, son. So some of you all are, are like this bottle, all right? This is you. This is you. And this is the person you're in relationship with. And what you're doing is trying to get all of you. You're trying to get all of you inside of them. And after about two weeks, the rest of you is on the ground. After pouring into them just for a few moments. And then after you pour everything out onto them. And then when it's time for them to pour back into you. That's why you're unfulfilled, because you're incompatible. So what you want to do, matter of fact, bring me one of those used ones. It's a better analogy. Jazz, you didn't change your shoes. I knew you was going to have the Holy Ghost on you. <laughs> See, what you need is somebody who will say, I don't have as much as you have, but I can hold as much as you can hold. And if you give me some time and let my cup fill up, when it's my time to pour back into you, I'll make sure you're overflowing. Can I get every bottle to stop dating the cap? I need every bottle in here to start shouting, God, take the caps out of my life. And then... Now, this is what happens. You grow, they grow. You grow, they grow. Then you grow again and they stay the same side. Now you got the same problem. Now you need to go find. Huh? And this is what life is. It is the continuation of becoming a different container and finding people on the same level are growing them up to be so that you don't keep pouring all of what you have into somebody who couldn't contain it in the first place. People who have the same dream understand what it is to hold 24 ounces. People who have the same dream understand the process of being balanced. If I had another bottle of water up here that was the same ounce, it still might not be compatible because one could be acidic and the one could be balanced, which means that sometimes you could hold the same thing, but one could be water and the other poison. So then it is not about how much, it's about what. And do we have the same thing in us so there can be exchange between us 
so that I am not sick every time we have an encounter. Is this making sense? Clap your hands if this is making sense to you. All right. Number two, how many of you all have a dream? Number two, don't be afraid of the picture. A dream is nothing more than an idea asking permission to live. A dream is nothing more than an idea asking for permission to live. In other words, if God didn't want you to have it, he wouldn't have put it in your head. If you got enough courage to dream it, you have enough capacity to get it. And you got to stop being afraid of your dreams because you don't have experience. Think big every day, all the time. I want you to look at your current situation and I want you to multiply it in your mind before it happens in your reality. I want you to see it bigger. Does this make sense to you all? As a man thinks, so is he. In other words, I cannot see it or be it until I can think it. So you're saying, God, give it to me. God says, think it first. The cost of having it is a dream. How many of you ever had a dream and woke up and could remember what you dreamed about? Now, you got to understand how hard this was for, for Joseph. Because Joseph... He didn't have a Bible. He didn't have the word and limited revelation. Do you understand how much more spiritually mature Joseph had to be than us that he could believe this much without a Bible? Y'all listening to me. See, now you got a scripture that says think on these things and lift up your heads and I was old but I'm young you got all of that no weapon you got all of that he didn't have anything but revelation he had no prophetic utterances he had no no major prophet and minor prophet he had no epistles he had no gospels he had no psalms there was no proverb and yet he believed how is it possible that he could believe off of a dream and we can't believe off the scripture When Joseph was there, all they had was revelation. And you know what God showed me. He says, people of God, pastor, tell them I'm getting back to the days of revelation. I'm getting ready to cause people to go into deep sleeps again. And I'm going to take something out of them. Y'all not here with me today. I'm, I'm getting ready to start speaking to my people in dreams again. And, 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 and I'm, I'm, getting ready to, I'm getting ready to speak in utterances. And I'm, and I'm getting ready to send prophets again. And, and you're going to have to be in tune with the word of God. And, and if you miss the word, you'll miss the blessing. So I'm going to talk to you through dreams again. How many of y'all got a dream again? You do know that most times you dream about the last thing you thought about. So if you go to sleep thinking negative, that's why you're going to be falling off a cliff in your dream. <laughs> Have you ever woke up out of your dream and felt like, man, who beat me up? You looking at your, your husband or your wife like, I know you must have hit me when I was asleep. You woke up sore like you were in a fight. I want you to go to sleep thinking positive. I want you to put positive music or positive books or something in your head, in your subconscious, so that when you go to sleep, you can think on these things. Everything you've ever saw, everything you've ever read, everything you've ever heard, everything you've ever encountered is in your subconscious right now. And God will call it to remembrance when you need it. I'm up here preaching to you right now. I didn't plan to say none of what I'm saying, but because I have already studied it, because I already know it, because I've already thought it, God will bring it out because I am using the gift. You've got to make sure that you put it in you because you cannot make withdrawals where you've made no deposits. Everybody say, trust the picture. When he told them his dream, they tried to kill him. And I'm going to tell you the same thing is going to happen to you because heavenly honor always brings earthly harassment. You're going to go from being their favorite to their most hated. It's just going to happen and you're going to be like, oh my God, I thought this relationship was going to last forever. Oh my God, I thought we were going to be friends forever. Oh my God, I thought this was going to be my boo thing. Forever. 
capacity. Don't worry about the color. Don't worry about the coat. How much can you hold? Everybody say trust the picture. The Bible says in John 17 that Jesus gave the disciples the word and the world hated them. When God gives you something, you become the envy of the people who didn't receive it. And again, I'm right back where I started. You didn't even ask for it. You didn't just wake up and say, Lord, make me the favorite. You just were wise. You went to Bible study. You, you went to church. You did the other things that other people wouldn't do. You, you forgave people who despitefully used you, and, and, and you, you didn't hold a grudge, and, and you tithed when you didn't have the money to do it, and you just did all of these things, and all of those were tests, and then God rewarded you because of the work that you did, and I'm telling you right now, be not weary, Lord, thank you, Jesus, in your well-doing, for you will reap a harvest if you faint not. Matter of fact, thank you, Holy Spirit. God told me to spend the next 30 seconds just telling every person, don't you give up, don't you quit, don't you be weary. Everything that you're doing right now is getting ready to pay off. But what God wants me to tell you is that you got to act like you have it before he has put it in your hand over the next 18 seconds. I need everybody to act like it's done. Act like you got it. Act like you're prepared. Act like you're wanting it. Come on, give him glory for what's to come. Don't be sad. Lift up your heads. Don't be broken. He's a, he's a lifter upper of our head. He's a, he's a heart fixer and a mind regulator. Come on, you got five more seconds to give God glory. You got to praise with pain. You got to worship with bills. Some of y'all got bills on your counter right now. You're scared to open them. Because you know you can't pay them. They got all kind of different colors. Some of them red, some of them pink. Some of them say open immediately. And you're wondering, God, how am I going to do it? God says, you're not. I am. Somebody say, God, you do it. When Rachel had Joseph, her one son was better than the other ten that her husband had before him. God can give you one blessing to wipe out all of your problems. You don't believe me? He will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out, open your Bible, Malachi, and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. I'm telling you that you're getting ready to walk into a season where one blessing is going to take care of all of your problems. God, thank you. One check is going to pay off all the debt. One conversation is going to solve all the problems. Come on, somebody say, God, you can trust me with it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know, I don't know if y'all believe that because that ain't how you act when you know that God's going to send one thing. God's going to send one thing to answer everything. God didn't need but one Adam to get all of humanity started. He only needed one Jesus to get all of humanity saved. And he only needs one you to solve the problems of your whole family. And I'm telling you, it's going to start with you. Somebody slap your neighbor and say, I got a coat, baby. I got a coat. And I'm not going to use this coat to brag about. This coat is going to solve financial problems in my family for the next generation. This one coat is going to stop cancer for the next 10 years. This one coat is going to... Lord, help me. Let me move on. <laughs> Somebody say one blessing. Matter of fact, I want to tell 15 of you just one prayer away. The next time you get off your knees from your next prayer, a miracle is going to happen. I need all of the one step, one prayer, one praise, one hallelujah people to just start shouting right now because something is about to happen in your life. Slap your neighbor and say just one more time. One Matter of fact, by this time tomorrow, the enemies you see today, you shall see no more. Somebody ought to give God some glory. Somebody shout, it only takes one. It only takes one. One touch from God. One prayer. One praise. One hallelujah. One thank you, Jesus. One shout. One phone call can change your life. 
one relationship, one customer. Woo, thank you, Holy Ghost. You get the right customer, they tell their following, then here come everybody else. You just need one. One friend. Somebody say, I'm one away. I'm one away. I'm one hallelujah away from a breakthrough. I'm one away. I'm one away. I'm one thank you, Jesus, away from getting out of debt. I'm just, matter of fact, Lord, thank you. If you'll fulfill this out of the words out of my mouth, some of y'all got one student loan payment left. Just one. Just one. You're going to make one and then something's going to happen and God's going to do the rest. Somebody say, just one. You're one tithe away from having a financial blessing. Just one. I wish I had somebody who believed the word of the Lord. It ain't never took God a whole lot to do nothing. Just one. God's going to send you one friend that's better than all ten of the ones you got. I feel the word of the Lord in this place. Oh, Lord, I feel your presence in this place. Because some of y'all thought it was going to take longer than this. Some of y'all were prepared to struggle for the next three years. Matter of fact, you got a plan at home and said, by the time 2022 comes, God says, no, this year, this year. Before elevation is over and before expansion starts, it's, I said it's about to happen. Somebody ought to thank God ahead of time. Somebody shout, it ain't going to take as long as I thought. It's not going to take as long as I thought because I thought I was going to have to do it with the coat I used to wear. But I'm going to do it in my new season, in my new garment, in my new vesture, in my new vision, in my new victory. Somebody shout, I'm changing clothes. I'm changing mindsets. I'm changing the way I talk. I'm even changing who I talk to. Because I'm not about to give my, oh, I'm not giving my pearls to swine. Some of y'all are going to have to either hang up the phone or delete the number. But God says don't even have a new conversation with an old connection. Because what I'm getting ready to do, you're going to need one. Hmm. It's a trap to make you think you need all of that. You don't need your phone ringing all day, every day. It's a trap. The devil got you so addicted to your phone ringing that when it don't ring, you look at it and don't nobody love me. Don't nobody, ain't nobody even calling me. You can't get nothing done because every time you get ready to work, you got to help somebody else who don't want to work, who just wants your influence. Your phone is about to stop ringing. Because it's a trap. Somebody come out of that trap. Walk right out of it. You're walking away from ordinary into extraordinary and you cannot I repeat you cannot take a new mindset and change your old level you got to go to another level and let the mindset operate at the next level because if you take the next level mindset and you take it back down to the basement it's still going to be damp and cold you can't change what it is are you with me today I said are you with me today and the other thing I wanted to tell you is that as you go, you're not going to need permission. Stop asking people what you think I ought to do. They don't know. If they knew, they would have did it. I just want to get your opinion. What you think I ought to do? You asking somebody on how to get to Galveston that's only been to Dallas. They don't have directions. They've never been there. They don't know. Why are you asking them? You don't need permission. What you need is Revelation. And when you get revelation, the people you ask permission from, they won't understand because God didn't speak to them. You know, every once in a while, God will come in your life and he'll just tell you and nobody else will see it and nobody else will understand it. And you will look like a fool, Noah. And you'll be building a boat and it won't be any rain and everybody will call you crazy. But they won't understand that you're prepared for a storm that God's about to send that he didn't announce. Are y'all praying with me today? Somebody say, no more permission. Stop asking permission from people to be happy. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Stop asking people, am I pretty? And just walk up and tell them, I just want to announce I'm pretty. Do you like this dress on me? Just tell them, I like this. It's fine. You ain't got to. But if you want me to wear something you like, you can buy it. But I'm going to wear this. You got to be convinced before you ask. 
Otherwise, you'll be persuaded by somebody's opinion. You got to know who you are before you ask anybody who you are. You've been defined by people who couldn't see past who you are or what they are, so you let them tell you who you could be. You don't need permission to be great. You've already been formed to be great. I, ain't, I can't get back to the sermon. Y'all have messed up my whole mind. I said you don't have to ask for permission to be great. You don't need anybody's permission to get out of poverty. You don't need anybody's permission not to be depressed. You don't need a relationship to be happy. Y'all, y'all missing what I'm saying. You, you, you're thinking that you got to go to people and say, can I be happy? No. Some of you all put up certain parameters and you think if you have this, then it'll give you that. You can be happy single. Single is cheap. Huh? When you're single, you can break anything in the house. Who's going to say something to you? When you're single, you ain't got to clean up and you ain't got to cook. Huh? Mess around and get booed up. Everything changed, bro. You got, you got somebody talking about, I'm hungry. What you cooking? You're like, oh, I work too. <laughs> How many ladies, y'all ain't going to tell, you ain't going to say that, home. you be like, oh my God, we both just work eight hours. Why do you think I got more energy than you? <laughs> Somebody say no permission. Heaven and earth may pass away, but God's word will never pass away. Lastly, get ready for your promotion. How many are ready for a promotion? You know, whenever you move a kid up a grade, they may know the information but they don't know the individuals. <laughs> the way you know you're being elevated is when you start looking around and not recognizing anybody. As long as you recognize everybody, it's a clue that you are where you always been. You need to start seeing people in places you ain't never seen them before. You need to start hearing people use words that you don't know the definition to and be Googling while they're talking. Oh, yes, I've seen an acquisition before, absolutely. <laughs> I want to tell you, you need to start seeing some things that are familiar because the same it's the same. Where is this person? Why is this person interested in me? Why, is the, why are these kind of people starting to follow me? Why is this person coming in my office? Why am I being contacted from people who I didn't give my number to? I, I'm only talking. Just see, this ain't for everybody, Pastor Torrance. I know I'm talking to you and Kim. Do, do you understand what's getting ready to happen when you have the audacity to make a move when everybody else thinks you should have stayed still? But you don't have to explain it. Because if you work it, they'll understand it. Who are these people that I've never seen before? Joseph. Go and get your brothers and check on them. And I want you to tell me what they are doing. Yes. Okay, Daddy, I will. I'll go. Did you know his brothers were in Shechem? 60-mile walk. He sent a 17-year-old boy on a 60-mile walk by himself. And he got to Shechem, and his brothers were not there. What would have most of us have done if we had got there and it didn't work out like we thought? Ordinary people go back home and say, Daddy, I walked all the way over there and they weren't there. I did what you told me to do. Extraordinary people do what Joseph did. Joseph got there and didn't see him in Shechem. He said, well, I ain't going to stop looking until I find him. 
And the Bible says he ends up 20 miles away from Shechem in a place called Dotham. And he finds his brother there. Why? Because it's a trap for you to always stop when you're comfortable. That is the biggest trap the devil ever has is that we stop when we get comfortable. Now, be honest. How many of y'all work out? Let me see your hand. Okay. How many of y'all work out and be like, it ain't working? Come on now, be honest. Let me tell you why. If I tell you to do 10 push-ups and you can do them easily, but on the 10th push-up, it gets harder, the only push-ups that work are the ones that hurt. That's why most trainers will say this, give me one more. Why? Because the one more does more than the 10 you did easily. Because it only works when it burns. It only works when it hurts. And you're only going towards destiny when you get to the place where you feel like I can't take another step. But you put another, you put your leg right in front of the other and you keep straining and you keep walking and you keep fasting and you keep giving and you keep praying. It only works when you feel like you can't do anymore. And God says, I'm talking to people to come out of the trap. And I know that I told you to go 60 miles, but I didn't tell you that the destination was 80 miles because I wanted to see it. If you will return back to ordinary or if you will keep pressing toward the mark for the price of the high calling I need every presser in here say God give me the strength because I haven't found it yet but I won't stop I haven't conceived it yet but I won't stop I haven't arrived yet but I'm gonna keep pushing I need 58 people to say God since you trusted me with it I'm gonna keep going until I find it It will never be as easy as you thought. I'm going to open a business. That sounds so good. Until you get in there and find out you got to get permits. And then you get in there and find out that if you start winning, then there are people who will use the permitting process against you to stall your growth. Mess around and don't know what to do. The people who are next to you who think you're going to take traffic from them, they'll be calling the fire department on you. Y'all ain't, y'all ain't here. Y'all don't want this. Y'all don't want this. Y'all don't want this. See, y'all just want to do average and ordinary stuff, and that's fine. When you do average and ordinary stuff, you don't have to worry about haters. But when you do something big, everybody you threaten will call everything they can to keep you from growing. When you, when you threaten somebody's business, they, they call the police talking about, um... They parking on my lot. They ain't using a the lot. They not even open for business. But they such haters that they police in an empty lot. Because they don't want you to grow. But you got to push anyway. Because average is a trap and it wants everybody. But I want to preach to extraordinary people. Said so no weapon formed against you. will be able to prosper. If you're in this place and ordinary is trying to grab you, leap, leap to your feet right now. If average is trying to hold you down, leap up. Here's what the writer said. I will let nothing separate me from the love of God. Do you know why the Bible says you got to press? Because there's an opposite force that's pulling. See, I love when people feel, so you're going against nature. You're going to have to push because something is trying to hold you back and you got to pull away from it. Depression, let me go. Poverty, past. I would have did better if I knew better. Know better so you can do better. Take away all excuses. You are so gifted. Everybody knows it except for you. Every devil knows it and you don't know it. Every witch in your life knows it and you don't know it. Every warlock in your life knows it, but you don't know it. 
walk around with your head hung between your legs and you don't know who God created and you better meet yourself quickly. The opportunity of a lifetime only lasts in the lifetime of the opportunity. You don't have forever to be great. You're going to be great before you get it. And let me tell you, when your knees hurt, it ain't as easy. When your back is going out, you better do it while you're young. You better ask some of our people who have wisdom, who have gray hair to prove that they've made it, how hard it is to walk in and get a good paying job when somebody sees you as a has-been. You better get it while you can get it because you don't have forever. Youth is a trap. Youth is a trap. You're not going to be young forever. Strength is a trap. You're going to get weak every day. Good eyesight is a trap. They're going to go dim. Now, if you ever paid attention, people who live to be an old age die the same way they were born. You're born with no teeth. You live long enough, you'll die without them. You were born with no hair. You live long enough. When you were born, you couldn't walk. Live long enough. Everything God gave you a preview of how you're going to get out of here by how you were brought in here. You don't believe me, and I don't mean to be facetious. You were born with a diaper, live long enough, you'll leave with one. You needed somebody to take care of you from the womb, and you're going to need to take care of you to the tomb. It's a trap. Cute is a trap. Beauty is a trap. It's a vapor. It's fleeting. It'll leave you. Everything you're dependent on one day will betray you. Your hands, your back, your eyes, your brain, everything's going to betray you. Everything's going to slow down. That's why you got to do it while it is day. Somebody say, Lord, break me free from this trap. You're in this place today. Nobody move because I'm going to let you go. I need every person who came here today and said, you know what? If I'm not saved, I'm breaking that trap. I'm going to accept Jesus Christ. If I'm not a member of a church, I'm going to break that trap because I'm joining here today. If I've strayed away but I need to come home, I'm going to break that trap because I'm going to mature and come back home. You can come as you are, but don't leave like you came. I'm going to give you two minutes and 30 seconds to make up your mind that whatever trap the devil has put you in, whether there's no salvation, no home, no ministry to grow in, you're going to break it today. You can either shake my hand or you can find one of these people with this sign. On the count of three, whoever you are, if I'm talking to you, I want you to move. One, two, three, move. Whoever you are, whoever you are, God bless you. Whoever you are, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Somebody shout, it won't work, it won't work.
let you go. I saw this young man praying this morning. I knew the devil was trying to do something to him, and I saw him praying. And who the Son sets free is free indeed. One thing I loved about Jesus is if you ever saw a man that was in pain, he didn't care about his title. If you ever saw a man that was in pain, he didn't worry about that he was the son of man. He stopped where he was, whether it was a blind man, a lame man, a diseased man. And God stopped. We got to learn to stop. Everybody say stop. We got to learn to stop passing by people in trouble. We got to stop being so consumed with ourselves that we don't see an evil spirit. We don't see a demon trying to work. You got to stop. Somebody say stop. You got to stop. You got to pause. You got to pause. You got to pause. God, right now, everybody reach your hand this way. God, in the name of Jesus, whatever it is, it tried to kill him. It didn't work. It should have been dead, but you're still here. You're still here. God, right now, the name, see, when you, when you don't know what death looked like, you don't understand. But I see that the death angel tried to get him, but God set him free. God, right now, in the name of Jesus, now that his body is free, set his mind free. Give him joy, unspeakable joy enemy we are not afraid of you we come boldly before the throne of grace and we tell you that you have no residence here and the Holy Spirit must abide now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us before the only wise God our Father we take authority we take authority we take authority in the name of Jesus, we take authority. Stand up to the devil. We proclaim unto the death of Jesus Christ that we are safe and we are safe in his arms. If you love Jesus, shout hallelujah. Hug somebody on your way out. Tell them I love you. Ain't nothing you can do about it.